The Earth is hurtling towards a climate danger zone, and scientists say greenhouse gas emissions are to blame. Humanity is on thin ice, and that ice is melting fast. Climate change is scary. The world is changing rapidly, and a lot of research shows that we could soon be at a point of irreversible damage that could leave the entire world on the brink. Nearly half of humanity is living in the danger zone now. Many ecosystems are at the point of no return now. Extreme weather has been hitting us hard for decades now, with catastrophic consequences. And those impacts are getting worse and could potentially be irreversible. The climate time bomb is ticking. So how do we fix this? How can humans save the world from ourselves? There are several measures at play right now, including consuming less fossil fuels and transitioning to renewable energy sources like solar and wind. Climate scientists from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said that clean energy and technology can be exploited to avoid the growing climate disaster. Government's industry needs to stop investing in fossil fuels, moving towards renewable energy. But there's another super interesting way that the world is trying to fix the climate crisis. And that's by paying African countries to protect their rainforest. In 2021, Gabon became the first African country to get paid for protecting its rainforest. The Central African country received $17 million as part of a much larger $150 million deal it had agreed. That first payment came after Gabon had successfully proven that it had slowed down deforestation in the two previous years, and it's a fascinating example of an ongoing $800 million experiment to fight climate change, essentially by paying African countries to protect large rainforests. Now, there are a few obvious questions to ask here. First, why the bond? Second, what makes these rainforests so important? And third, who's paying for all of this? So first, why Gabon? The first thing we need to understand here is what Gabon's landscape looks like and why this makes sense. Nearly 90% of Gabon's entire landscape is covered by tropical rainforests. And even more importantly, Gabon has an average deforestation rate of less than 0.1%, which means its forests have existed for a long time and its forests are not being destroyed at alarming rates like in other parts of the world. So essentially, Gabon is what you would call a high forest, low deforestation country. And this is a pretty rare status because only 10 other countries in the world are regarded as being high forest, low deforestation countries. So next, why rainforests? Well, we need to understand why rainforests are incredibly important, obviously. Now, as you might know, rainforests do the human race a great service by absorbing carbon, and then releasing the oxygen that we all breathe. The leaves of growing trees absorb atmospheric carbon dioxide, releasing oxygen and locking up the carbon until the tree eventually dies and decays or is burnt. Some of the carbon from falling leaves enters the woodland soil and is stored there for the long term, making the entire woodland ecosystem an important carbon store. Now, this does two things. By capturing carbon, rainforests ensure that the world's carbon emissions are not destroying the planet as fast as they should be. And then by releasing oxygen, these rainforests practically keep the human race alive because we need oxygen to breathe. But because Gabon's rainforests are so large, covering 90% of the country, they capture more carbon than the entire country actually emits. And that's why those rainforests are vital. So now that we understand what Gabon's landscape is like and why these rainforests are important, Let's talk about the plan in place to protect the forest by paying African countries who have them and essentially answer the question, who's paying for all of this? The idea to reward countries with large rainforests for protecting them has been around for a while. But as far as Gabon goes, the process began formally in 2015 with something called the Central Africa Forest Initiative or CAFI for short. The initiative was a collaborative agreement between, on one side, six Central African countries, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Republic of Congo, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, and Cameroon. And on the other side, non-African partners, the European Union, France, Norway, Germany, South Korea, the Netherlands, and Belgium. So why Central Africa? Why not West, North, East, or Southern Africa? It's because Central Africa is home to the Congo Basin, the second largest tropical rainforest in the world, which is also often referred to as the lungs of Africa because they help us breathe, get it? Now, the Congo Basin is one of the few remaining places in the world that absorbs more carbon than it emits, absorbing nearly 1.5 billion tons of carbon from the atmosphere every year. And that's billion with a B. Another way to think about this is that the Congo Basin absorbs about 4% of global emissions. 
Now, the driving thesis of CAFE is something called the Red Mechanism. It's basically a result-based payment to countries that protect their rainforest by slowing down deforestation and forest degradation. And it was developed through the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Essentially, the thinking behind the mechanism is that since the forests in developing nations play a key role in protecting global ecosystems through carbon storage and also by ensuring biodiversity, then these developing nations should get paid for the services the forests provide to the rest of the world. And more importantly, the theory is also that if these developing nations can benefit financially from preserving their forests, then they are more likely to continue to protect those forests while, of course, the forests do a great job of keeping the rest of us alive. So take Gabon as an example. Its forests capture 100 million tons more carbon than the entire country emits, and it has more plant species than all other West African forests put together. And so CAFE was created with ambitions that the donor countries will provide about $500 million in funding between 2015 and 2025 to countries that protect their rainforests. But in reality, CAFE has already surpassed that $500 million target because donor countries and the EU have already committed over $800 million in funding. And this money is expected to go towards results-based payments to Central African countries who can show clear evidence of protecting their rainforests by slowing down deforestation rates. Now, we know Gabon has already agreed a $150 million deal, right? But Gabon is not the only country that's potentially getting paid. In 2021, the Democratic Republic of Congo also agreed a $500 million deal with CAFE to protect parts of the Congo Basin rainforest by slowing down the rates of forest loss, by placing parts of the forest under protection, and also regenerating any parts of the forest that had previously been degraded. And also, Congo Brazzaville agreed a $65 million deal to protect its rainforest, which occupy nearly 70% of the entire country and are as large as Greece and Portugal put together. Now, it's important to remember that based on the red mechanism, these countries will only get paid based on verified results that they have successfully protected their forests. And so in total, the Central African Forest Initiative has received over $800 million in committed funds from donors to drive this ambitious plan of saving the world by literally paying African countries to protect their rainforests and by extension, playing a key role in hopefully resolving the climate change crisis. Now, to be clear, protecting the rainforest in Gabon and the Congo and around Central Africa are not a standalone measure that can fix climate change. A lot of other things are happening around the world as well. Cars are going electric and energy sources are going green. But what's clear is that protecting these rainforests could be one of the moves that can make an important difference in years to come. Now, will it work for sure in the long term? We're going to have to wait and see. But in the meantime, if you're ever around Central Africa, maybe you should consider paying a visit to the Congo Basin and see for yourself the amazing forest that's playing a super important role in saving the world. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.